We love a good easter egg here at Oxbox, but possibly our favourite kind of easter egg is when developers hide a whole other playable game inside their game. Two games for the price of one. Now that's a savings. Sometimes these games can only be unlocked via some arcane method, sometimes they're just out there in the open, but however you find them, there are some truly great hidden gems in places you'd least expect them. Check it out for yourself with these seven games that, to paraphrase Exhibit, heard you like video games, so they put a video game in your video game so you can game while you game. Enjoy! As I understand it, Night in the Woods is an extremely well-regarded RPG once you get out of your character May's bedroom. But I wouldn't know it because I spent all my time in there playing bass. Nailed it. Okay, that's not entirely true, but just as I was over the bass playing minigame, I discovered a new minigame called Demon Tower, and then that took over as my newest obsession. Accessible by clicking on the desktop icon on May's laptop after Angus fixes it, Demon Tower, or to give it its full title, Ancient Doom Spire Demon Tower Part 4 Slaughter of the Blood Thief is a 2D roguelike action game in which your character, an adventurous cat, must battle their way through a spooky tower from the bottom up. As you travel through the tower you encounter weird enemies, loot and some memorable bosses as well as some genuinely terrifying sound design. And truly arresting imagery. I'm actually a little freaked out. I might go back to playing the bass for a bit. Ants? Is this some kind of a joke? You got ants in your pants? Call an exterminator. I'm on vacation. Command & Conquer helped establish many classic RTS systems and rules of resource gathering, base building, real-time strategy. But the series is probably best known for spicing up its potentially dry strategy gameplay with scenery-chewing performances from well-known actors and performers like Jonathan Price, Peter Stormare, and of course, the legendary Tim Curry. I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Space! Any excuse. What it isn't known for, but should be, is the secret hidden game accessible via a secret method from the main game's title screen called It Came From Red Alert, in which your military units do battle against, what else, giant ants. Yes sir, at one. To access this game, players had to hold down the shift key and click on the speaker on the title screen, at which point you'll be able to select the new ant-based game mode, complete with bespoke cutscenes, with actors doing a bang-up job with a bunch of dialogue about ants. Look, I don't care how you do it, son. I'd piss on a spark plug if I thought it'd do any good. You just tell your men to get out there and kick some mad ass. And then a 50s B-movie style intro to the new game featuring a giant ant with red glowing eyes. Then it's into the missions where your plucky band of humans must hold off this invading horde of evil ants using nothing but your awesomely superior firepower and tactical skills. Yes. Yes sir, affirmative. Yes, yeah, of course. In fact, all this mode is missing is an enemy ant commander to appear on screen and taunt you during your missions. I know ants can't speak English, but I've got a good feeling this one is thinking about escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Goat Simulator is a game in which you play as a goat, or more accurately as a whirlwind of chaos and destruction that looks like a goat. A small but important distinction. Ah! Ah! I think I broke something. Ah! There's loads to do, see and lick in the town in which Goat Simulator is set, but if you're looking for a fun game to play as a break from this fun game, then you might want to head on over to the in-game offices of Goat Simulator developer Coffee Stain Studios, who are probably now regretting programming themselves into a game with a violent unhinged goat. Probably why the sequel took so long to come out. 
It turns out that Goat Simulator isn't the only string to copy Stain's bow, however, because it seems they've been working on something else as well. A clone of hit viral mobile game Flappy Bird, imaginatively titled Flappy Goat. It may not be the most sophisticated game in the world, but there's a reason why Flappy Bird became such an overnight sensation. It's incredibly addictive and genuinely fun. Even when you're controlling a goat, playing it by proxy. Anyway, bear this in mind for the future. This is pretty much the only way to stop goat rampages, because I'm going to be here all day. Doctor, is this a hospital or a resort? Agent 47 doesn't exactly give off the air of someone who enjoys games. Unless it's golf, and he's had a chance to get at the golf balls beforehand. In fact, if I had to pick a game that I think Agent 47 would love, it would be Minesweeper, the meticulous explosive deduction game that was, I think, legally required to be included on all computers made between 1990 and 2015. That's why it makes total sense that there's a secret hidden version of Minesweeper called Hitmine, hidden in Hitman's Hokkaido level. To access it, you need to clear the helipad, dress as the chief surgeon, and place an explosive device right by this windsock. Now you can head into the operating room and to the control computer where you can now use this incredibly advanced piece of medical equipment to play a video game. The key way in which Hitmine differs to regular Minesweeper is that if you beat the level, it causes several exploding rubber ducks to spawn in the room next to you, killing your target, Eric Sodas, along with everyone else in the room. which is handy in this specific instance, but does feel like it might hurt sales elsewhere. I don't know, a game or something. All right. Yeah, let's play, I'll beat the shit out of you. The hell you won't. In cooperative prison escape game, A Way Out, you play Vincent and Leo, two convicts on the run who are collaborating on growing one full beard. Being on the run from the law, you'd think Vincent and Leo wouldn't have enough time for leisure activities, but they're always stopping to play baseball, muck around on wheelchairs, and even form a jam band. Oh, you're good. Yeah, this sounds good, man. For a simple yet compellingly Moorish gameplay experience, however, you're going to want to check out the arcade cabinet in the airplane hangar towards the end of the game. This two-player arcade game is called Grenade Brothers and plays like if Pong were trying to recreate volleyball rather than tennis, with players attempting to knock a grenade back and forth over a dividing wall. Beat that! What makes this so much better than Pong is the unpredictability of the grenade, as well as the fact that players can hop to affect its trajectory, making the game much more tense and difficult than any game that existed in 1972 when the game is set should be. Alright, I told you man, I'm the boss of this shit. Congratulations. In fact, you might find that your game of Grenade Brothers gets so heated that it will create problems for your characters further down the line. <sighs> I mean, I assume that's what caused this. We've all been there. This Easter egg is a homage to a game which is a homage to a free game that came out in 2002, titled Sexy Hiking. Of course, everyone knows what your objective is in the main game of Just Cause 4. Cause as much ridiculous, explosive destruction as possible. In the unlikely event you get tired of that, however, you might want to check out a secret game that is so well hidden, it's unlikely you'll stumble across it by accident. To find this game, you need to travel to a high mountain peak in the northwest corner of the Picos Helados region. Eagle-eyed players will be able to spot a black cauldron with a pickaxe balancing on it, and once you touch the cauldron, your character Rico will climb inside, and the game, known as Getting Over It, will start. The game itself is based on an indie game of the same name, Getting Over It by developer Bennett Foddy, in which a nude man in a cauldron uses a pickaxe to try and drag himself over a mountain, while Bennett Foddy chimes in to deliver monologues on what is going on and the nature of perseverance. Starting over is harder than starting up. If you're not ready for that, or like if you've already had a bad day, then what you're about to go through might be too much. Feel free to go away and come back. I'll be here. The version of the game in Just Cause 4 is shorter, thank goodness, but no less challenging or frustrating. I created this easter egg for a certain kind of person. To hurt them. 
or immensely satisfying when you do finally manage to get over an obstacle. Playing Just Cause is like constantly teetering on the edge of chaos. Actually, there is no edge to teeter upon. Mario Frigo. And Foddy is on hand to lend his perspective on things, with new voiceover recorded for the Just Cause 4 version of the game. Now I know you're most likely watching this easter egg online, where someone else has discovered and recorded it for you, like a baby bird being fed chewed up food. Don't worry, that's culture too. Well, this is the first time we've been described as culture. I'm gonna call my mum, she'll be delighted about this. In Life is Strange True Colours, you play as a bartender who can somehow afford to live in a giant open plan apartment with a foosball table, arcade machine, and rooftop access. When you said that you had a nice place, I was picturing small but homey. Well then, welcome to my crib. Possibly because it's set in a rundown mining town where a terrible tragedy happened. But still. Anyway, it's this arcade machine we're interested in, because if you care to check it out, you'll discover that it contains an original game created for Life is Strange known as Minehaunt, and that Minehaunt kicks ass. Like if Pac-Man, Donkey Kong and Dig Dug had a baby and then imprisoned it in a mine, Minehaunt has you racing around various mine-based levels, collecting coins and trying to avoid ghosts, which, spoiler alert, does kind of tie into the themes of Life is Strange True Colours. However, you won't care about that when you get into this game, because while it's deceptively simple, it's also enormously fun and addictive. And the retro graphics and sound are charming in a way that will keep you playing this game instead of, I don't know, manipulating people's emotions in the main game? It's something like that. I'll get to it in a minute. I'm just about to get a high score. Thank you so much for watching this video about the games hidden inside other games. I've got a little game hidden for you inside this video. If you click on one of these two videos, one of them is the correct one, the other will lead to a fiery explosive death. Which one is correct? You'll have to click and find out 50-50 chance. How do you like your odds?